The story begins with a high school boy who is our main protagonist, called Yu Watasaka, who wakes up one day to find out he can temporarily possess another person's body for five seconds. Unsure as to why he's suddenly gained this ability, Watasaka ends up using his powers to do mundane stuff, like possessing people he doesn't like so that he can get them into fights, or cheating on exams to bring his grades up. Otisaka even gets into a good high school and becomes the top student because of his fraudulent activities. Aside from his abilities, Otisaka is actually quite popular because of his good looks, so he gets asked out a lot by the girls. Although, he doesn't really give them the time of day, since he's after one girl only, called Yumi Shirayanagi, also known as the Madonna of the school. Otisaka even goes so far as to orchestrate a whole plan to save her from an oncoming truck, in an attempt to make Yumi fall in love with him. His plan succeeds, and Yumi offers to repay his kindness with food. For a brief moment, life seems to be going well for Adasaka. However, his contentedness is short-lived when his fraudulent activities get exposed by another girl, called Nao Tamori, who is the student council president of Hashinami Academy. Nao is joined by Jijiro Takajo, a boy who can move at high speeds, and together, they force him to transfer schools. Nao explains that Hashinami Academy is home to other students with special abilities. They're all in one place for safety reasons, because their powers are considered as an illness, caught during adolescence and will disappear in due time. To make him believe her, Nao uses her power, which is the ability to become invisible in front of one target. At the end, she and Jijiro succeed in their plan, and tell Adasaka that he's also going to be part of their student council to help them overthrow those that abuse their powers for no good. Back home, Adasaka is greeted by his little sister called Ayumi, who tells him they're both getting transferred to Hashinami Academy as scholarship students. And at the behest of their uncle, the siblings also move to a better apartment beside the school. This is the start of Adasaka's adventures at the academy. At his new school, Adasaka gains more information about people with special abilities. Now tells Adasaka that people like them have long been taken as guinea pigs for neuroscientists, which is why it's important that they stick together. She further explains that the student council is the only group that is entrusted with a special mission, which is to get a hold of those with special powers and either protect them or threaten them to never use their powers. Now then gathers Adasaka and Jijiro and brings them to the student council room. Once inside, Adasaka meets the council's helper, who is another student with powers that gives them their first case, that is to find the person who can use thoughtography, which is the ability to burn images from their mind onto surfaces using psychic means. They head to a nearby school, and the trio split up to ask around for any rumors or strange incidents that involve photographs. Suddenly they spot a suspicious student, and now commands Adasaka to possess the student to make him stop running. Jijiro proceeds to tackle the poor guy, as now scrounges around his belongings. She finally sees the evidence she needs, lewd pictures of a pretty student. Upon further questioning, they find out that the pictures were bought from a guy named Yudo. The trio catch the culprit who is the captain of the archery team, now confronts Yudo, who tells her that he's doing this to help his ill parents. Yudo tries to threaten Nao with lewd pictures of her own, but it backfires as Nao tries to reason with Yudo, saying if he keeps using his powers his life will be ruined. This seems to get through to him, and the trio leave him alone. The next day, Nao takes Adasaka somewhere. On the way there, Nao tells Adasaka that her brother, called Kazuki, was the first person to gain a special ability. However, as he was about to sign with a record company their mother begged them both to enter a boarding school. A scientist who had relations to this boarding school did experiments on Kazuki, and made him stay in a sanatorium until he couldn't even recognize his own sister. Now, as they reach their destination, it is revealed that Nao took Adasaka to see her brother, who is currently tearing up his room. Once he's calmed down with painkillers, Nao takes her brother outside for some fresh air. Adasaka offers that there may be a cure for Kazuki, but Nao tells him that scientists treat people with powers like batteries. Once they run out of power, they discard them for another person with a special ability. The trio get another case, a spiritual medium who can channel the dead, and someone with pyrokinesis. The person they're looking for is Yusa Nishimori, a popular vocalist idol for the group Haro Haro. In their pursuit, they encounter a guy who asks why they're looking for Yusa. Now doesn't say anything, except that they know she also has supernatural abilities, and that they can help save her. The guy takes them to see Yusa, and they discover that her powers seem to be a two-in-one thing, because Yusa can channel the dead as a medium. And with this ability, Yusa's deceased older sister called Misa can possess her body and use her ability too which is pyrokinesis. Yusa is initially unaware of her channeling abilities and thinks she's only sleepwalking whenever she's possessed. 
Mao asks Misa, who has temporarily possessed Yusa, if she knows why Yusa is being chased. One of Misa's friends from when she was still alive hands now a device that Yusa accidentally took home after a shoot. The device belongs to a TV producer, and Yusa apparently read a text that includes incriminating evidence against the TV producer. Now offers to help them threaten the TV producer to stop what he's doing, and they meet up with his men to give back the device. Once there, Misa possesses Yusa and throws a fireball at her friends, who disguise themselves as bodyguards of the producer in order to threaten him into backing off. With the help of Arasaka, Now, and Jijiro, the ruse works and the TV producer runs away scared. After, Now offers Yusa, slash Misa, to transfer to Hashinami Academy in order to protect them. At school the next day, Yusa takes over the school in terms of popularity. Now takes her to the student council room, and the group of four get their next case, a person with telekinesis. Luckily, Now already seems to have an idea of who this person is and has footage of him using his powers. He turns out to be a baseball player who uses his ability to manipulate the game in his favor. They head to the baseball field of the nearby school and immediately confront the student. He denies it at first, and now makes it clear that their powers are only active during their adolescent years, and once they hit adulthood their powers will be gone. In order to make the guy listen to them, now suggests a friendly baseball match. The guy, called Arafumi, agrees. The group of four plus a couple of other students from their school start the match against Arafumi's team. As the game progresses, now, Arasaka, Jijiro, and Misa, who has overtaken Yuza's body by the way, use their abilities in order to eventually win the game. In the end Arafumi is forced to never use his ability again. The group get another case, a person whose ability is to float on air. Now procures an occult magazine that reports sightings of a man who can supposedly fly. Thinking that's where they'll see the suspicious person again, the quartet then head to the mountains on an impromptu camping trip. One night, while waiting for the ability wielder, Arasaka finds now listening to music by herself. Arasaka asks what music she's always listening to, and now replies that it's Sheen, a band that her brother used to love. The pair happen to bond over music as they watch the city below come to life. During this time, now casually says her dream is to someday film a music video for Jean, and she gives Arasaka her music player to let him listen to music whenever he wants. As the pair rejoin Jijiro and Yusa, now notices that they're being trailed by their person of interest. True enough, as they're preparing their next meal of roasted corn, a man calls out for their attention. After conversing with them for a bit, the guy fails in trying to shoo them away so he can practice flying. He tries to steal Nao's camcorder, but she lures him in an abandoned well to trap him. He ends up using his powers to fly out and takes the camcorder and flies way up into the air. Arasaka takes over his body and stops him from getting away, and now explains the dangers of using their powers. The guy, whose name is Sato, explains that he had dreams to someday fly freely through the skies, but relents in not using his powers anymore for his own safety. Once back home, Arasaka notices that Ayumi has developed a fever. The next day, Arasaka discovers that Ayumi's fever hasn't gone down yet. In the student council room, the group get a case that involves a person who can make someone collapse. They also manage to figure out that this person is living in the same apartment complex they all live in. Now deduces that this can't be an adult staying at home, because powers only appear during adolescence. Therefore, this is someone who's at home sick from school. Immediately, Arasaka thinks it's his sister, and tells everyone that Ayumi is currently bedridden because of her fever. Arasaka and his friends check on Ayumi's condition. However, the trio quickly find that three of Ayumi's friends are there with her, including Oikawa, the guy that Ayumi rejected. Later that evening, Ayumi tells her brother that she had a nightmare earlier, and she dreamt that the ground started to crack. The next day, Arasaka reports his findings to the rest of the group. With so little information about this power, Arasaka tells Ayumi to stay home again tomorrow. Arasaka and Jijiro get called to the student council room, only to find out that Ayumi snuck in at school today. Elsewhere, Ayumi encounters Oikawa, who then asks her if she's willing to go out and eat with him today after class. However, Ayumi rejects him once again and leaves to go back to class. On the way there, she meets another friend, Kanishi, who confronts Ayumi for stealing her boyfriend, Oikawa. Ayumi panics at the sight of Kanishi brandishing a cutter and tries reasoning with her. When she couldn't reason with her Ayumi breaks out and tries to run, but eventually gets cornered somewhere in school. Just as she's about to get hurt, Ayumi's powers awaken and the ground beneath her starts to crumble. Meanwhile, the group manage to sneak into the middle school, only to find a part of the building gets destroyed. Arasaka immediately runs to the wreckage with the hopes of finding his sister. Just then, a piece of rubble cracks and falls straight down to Arasaka. We then see Arasaka wake up in the infirmary, and a nurse calls out for a doctor to examine him. He immediately asks where his sister is, but the doctor tells him that she unfortunately passed away. 
The wake of Ayumi's death leaves Otisaka in complete shock and disarray. Unable to even make food for himself, he lives off of noodles in a cup. He even turns away his friends whenever they try to visit him. The next day, Yumi comes to visit Otisaka in the hopes to lift up his spirit, but even she gets turned away. Now that he's out of ramen, he goes out to buy some at a convenience store. Although he doesn't go home after that, and instead goes to a comic cafe far from the city to hide from the student council, Otisaka spends his days in a wreck, playing games at a nearby arcade, eating junk food, and sleeping at the comic cafe. He also gets into a lot of fights with local gangsters, using his powers to win the fights and make them fight each other instead. After one of his fights, he sees one of the men he beat up reaching for a box. He opens it up and finds drugs inside. Otisaka takes it to a secluded area to take a hit for himself, when suddenly now arrives and kicks the paraphernalia off of his hands. Otisaka is shocked to find her there and asks her how she found him. Now tells him she's been with him this whole time, using her invisibility to conceal herself from him. Now tells him she feels responsible for Ayumi's death too, which is why she followed him all the way there. Otisaka immediately lashes out at her but now is able to calm him down and get him a proper meal to eat. They head to Jijiro's family home, and now prepares a dish called Amiris for him, just the way Ayumi used to make it. Eventually, now succeeds in getting Otisaka to come home. Otisaka tries to rebuild his life without Ayumi with the help of his friends. Now gets the group together once more, but this time to ask if anyone wants to watch Jean's gig with her. Otisaka ends up getting the other ticket. On his way home from school, Otisaka encounters a disabled person who he feels he recognizes and calls out their attention. Otisaka takes the woman to a restaurant where he learns that she's actually the vocalist for Jean, called Sala Shane. After having dinner with her, Sala instantly recognizes that Otisaka has been through a lot, just by the sound of his sighs. She asks him to tell her about it, and Otisaka does just that, and reveals to her that his sister recently passed away. Because of her insistence, Otisaka takes Sala back home so she can pay respects to Ayumi's altar. But before Sala leaves, he asks her if she can meet now, telling her she's a fan of the band but now refuses to come visit, and so Otisaka takes Sala to see someone else instead. On the way there, Otisaka asks if Sala is completely blind, and Sala confirms, stating that she bargained her eyesight away to become the lead vocalist for a band. Otisaka takes Sala to see Kazuki, with the hope of jogging his memory to make him recognize someone dear to him. Once they get there, they see Kazuki off his painkillers and is once again destroying his bet. Otisaka explains that Kazuki was once a fan of their band, but due to certain incidents he was unable to achieve his dream of signing his record deal. Sala steps forward and starts singing and Kazuki instantly calms down, seeming to recognize Sala's voice. In his calm state Otisaka asks if he can remember his little sister, and Kazuki is able to speak Nao's name. After parting ways with Sala, Otisaka receives a call from Nao, saying she's at the hospital right now, and thanks Otisaka for helping her brother. Otisaka meets Nao at Jean's gig, and he seems smitten at seeing her in casual clothes. As they watch Jean perform, Otisaka seems to remember something about his past. We get a flashback of Otisaka and Ayumi at a hospital. It appears that the siblings are there for research purposes related to their supernatural abilities. While lining up to get food at the cafeteria it is revealed that Otisaka and Ayumi have an older brother, called Shunsuke, who has the ability to travel through time. As the siblings eat, Otisaka dwells on how the scientists think his ability is that he can only take over a person's body for five seconds. As if they found out about his real capabilities, they would take his freedom away, just like their big brother. Just then, a man named Kumagami sits close to Otisaka and whispers to him that he's found someone with telepathy and that this person can send and receive messages from other people. Kumagami orders Otisaka to take over someone's body first, and then he gives Otisaka the location of the person with telepathy. Meanwhile, three other people are eating lunch in a secluded room. Ayumi asks that Kumagami, along with the three other people, are isolated from the rest of the group because their abilities are pretty amazing on their own, though it's not clear yet what they actually are. After some time and tests have passed, Ayumi is taken by guards to an undisclosed location but Otisaka protests saying that she doesn't have any powers. When he tries to reach for her, Otisaka is tased and wakes up to an earthquake and an announcement that their block will be shut down momentarily. A researcher opens Otisaka's room and tells him that his sister's collapse ability was forcefully brought out into the open, in turn causing the earthquake. Because she's too powerful the scientists make plans to dissect her and then get rid of her afterwards. This prompts Otisaka to save Ayumi, using his plunder ability. As it turns out, Otisaka's real ability is to steal other people's powers whenever he takes over their bodies. Otisaka gets to the telepath's room and steals his ability, but a guard sees him run away and attempts to shoot at him. A woman's voice calls out to the guard, and she knocks out the guard with only her mind. 
However, the woman collapses but is caught by her friend. Meanwhile, Adasaka makes his way around the building and telepathically talks to his brother, who is in restraints somewhere inside the facility. Adasaka tells Shunsuke that Ayumi is the reason behind the commotion and is about to get dissected. As he's running, gas leaks out of the walls making Adasaka stop in his tracks. Shichino, who is one of Kumagami's friends, goes through a wall with his ability to meet with Adasaka. He tells Adasaka to take his permeation ability in order to get to his brother. Adasaka does just this right as guards open fire onto Shichino. Adasaka leaps through the walls eventually getting to his big brother and frees him from his shackles. Shunsuke uses his time leap just as guards open up his door and we cut back to present time as Adasaka wakes up in a room with Nao. Nao tells him he collapsed during the gig, and Adasaka tells her he might have one more brother somewhere. Just as he says this, a man enters the infirmary and it's Kumagami. This guy is also the one who's been helping them locate the people with special abilities in their investigations. Kumagami tells the duo that Adasaka will save Ayumi from dying by using his brother's time leap ability. Kumagami takes Adasaka and Nao to a secret facility and leads them to Shunsuke who is now blind. We get a flashback of Shunsuke, Adasaka, and Ayumi as kids from Shunsuke's point of view. As the kids are eating breakfast it is revealed that Shunsuke can actually see into the future at this point, even pinpointing the exact date of their capture. Shunsuke narrates that after creating Time Leap, he became friends with Kumagami and his group. In a basement somewhere in the city, Kumagami leads Shunsuke to meet the rest of his friends. We have Shichino, with the ability to pass through walls, Medoki, who can hypnotize anyone to fall asleep, but she ends up falls asleep afterwards, and Mitamori, who can erase memories by touching the target. Shunsuke was able to create a secret organization filled with teenagers with special abilities. Eventually, Shunsuke decides that they need funds in order to employ other people, and thus makes another time leap into the past to bet on horses, or gamble, or win the lottery. However, by using up so much of his ability, Shunsuke's vision starts to get blurry. He figures out that he's slowly going blind because of the overuse of power. At this point, Shunsuke has already celebrated his 15th birthday countless of times already. But while eating with his siblings, a young Adasaka asks him what his plans are for high school. Here, Shunsuke gets the idea to establish Hashinami Academy, in an attempt to save his siblings and other kids like them from getting experimented on by scientists. However, Shunsuke can only go back in time for one last time leap, before going completely blind. Shunsuke goes back in time, saves all of them, and buys an institution to start his plans. However, Shunsuke makes one last request and that is to erase Adasaka and Ayumi's memories of him because he can't risk people knowing of his existence. Kumagami also follows suit and builds another school that will protect people with special abilities, now known as Hashinami Academy. Back in the present, now tells Adasaka that she and Jijiro have always been aware of what Adasaka's true ability is. Upon further investigation, every person Adasaka has possessed have lost their special ability, making it clear that once Adasaka steals the power, it's gone for good. Shunsuke asks Adasaka to take his time leap away to go back in time and save Ayumi. By taking the collapse ability from her, Adasaka goes back in time. On the day that Ayumi is on bed rest because of her fever, Adasaka wastes no time in telling Nao and the others about Ayumi's special ability, and he relives the entire day with Nao. However, before she leaves his apartment, he tells Nao that he actually used Time Leap to go back in time to save his sister. With Nao fully understanding what's going on, Adasaka goes back inside and steals Ayumi's ability before she gets into the accident that kills her. The next day, Adasaka drops off Ayumi at school. Now, Jijiro and Yusa appear and disguise themselves to sneak into the middle school. However, Jijiro is immediately caught while Adasaka hides himself inside a locker. Elsewhere, Yusa gets recognized and now escapes the crowd before they get into more trouble. We cut to Ayumi getting confronted by her friend with the cutter again. But this time when she gets cornered and screams, Adasaka leaps out of the locker and scares off the girl with Nao's help. Ayumi and Adasaka go home together, but on the way are confronted by Kumagami. They take the siblings to see Shunsuke. Ayumi and Adasaka are taken into the secret lair, where they meet Shunsuke. Once the siblings get reacquainted with each other, Shunsuke tells Adasaka that he's now in great danger because there are syndicates that will be going after him. Shunsuke tells Adasaka that he needs to stay there with him until the abilities disappear. He takes his siblings on a tour around the facility where they discover that the research facility is creating a vaccine to prevent future outbreaks before particles are spread all over the world. The researcher tells Adasaka that this whole ordeal started because of a long-orbit comet named Charlotte. This comet passes through the Earth every 75 years, 
and when it does, it showers unknown particles that generate special powers to those who inhale it. Shunsuke also tells his siblings that the vaccine can only prevent future appearances of special abilities, but it doesn't do anything for the people who already develop their abilities. Ayumi is then taken to meet the other ability wielders in the facility including Shunsuke's friends, since they're now going to be living together. As time progresses, Ayumi and Adasaka seem to be settling down well with the others. However, when Kumagami gets a whiff of another ability wielder, he sets out to meet with the student council. Adasaka tries to come with him, but is stopped because it's too dangerous. As Kumagami is driven by Furuki, he immediately gets the sense that something is amiss. Furuki starts spouting something about people threatening his family, and takes Kumagami to an unknown location. A group of people emerge from the shadows and ask Furuki to leave them. Kumagami is then subjected to physical abuse and gets restrained. Once he regains consciousness, he is tasked to give them information about every ability wielder he knows. He initially refuses but gets hurt into divulging information. Elsewhere, Shunsuke gets a call from the group's leader and asks him to hand over Adasaka to them or else now gets hurt. Shunsuke lays out a plan to have Adasaka rescue Kumagami and now but the younger man seems to panic at the thought of having to rescue them on his own. Though after some time, he eventually relents and Furuki takes him to the rival group's hideout. Once inside Adasaka immediately uses his looting power to check if the enemies are armed but find nothing. Below him now and Kumagami are taken as prisoners in the basement, rendering them in danger in case he uses collapse. Another ability user wounds his eye, making him unable to use time leap to go back in time. Out of options and in a panic, Adasaka uses Collapse anyway and Telekinesis to get out of harm's way. He is found by his brother and his friends. However, Kumagami dies after sacrificing himself to save now from getting hit by debris. Adasaka undergoes surgery to heal his eye. Once he wakes up, he recalls everything that happened and is immediately in a state of shock. Shichino injects a sedative into him to stop him from using Collapse and explains that he's been in a coma for two days now and that Kumagami is dead. As he's recovering from his injuries, Adasaka is visited by friends and family. After Madoki's visit, Adasaka makes his way up to the roof of the hospital to see his big brother looking sad after the death of his best friend. Sensing he can't do anything to lift up Shunsuke's spirits, he goes back to his room only to find Nao waiting for him. Feeling frustrated himself, he asks Nao what he should do. Nao tells him that since his brother already has a vaccine to prevent the further creation of supernatural powers, the next time the comet Charlotte appears, Adasaka should now steal the abilities of those with powers to save them from falling victim to terrorists who might want their powers for themselves. It's risky, since no one knows what will happen to Adasaka after, but it is a way to save everyone else. Adasaka doesn't even give it much thought and agrees with Nao's dangerous plan. When she asks him why he's so ready to push through with it, he tells her that because he wants to be the one to save her from now on and that he's now fallen in love with her. Now is a little confused by the sudden confession since their compatibility is a little off, but eventually tells Adasaka that she'll be waiting for him after he saves everyone else. Adasaka starts with Nao and steals her invisibility. Then, Adasaka makes his way back to the roof and tells his brother of his plans. Shunsuke says it's impossible but Adasaka's mind is made up and he sets off to steal everyone's abilities. After getting discharged from the hospital, Jijiro and Misa ask Adasaka to now take away their abilities. Adasaka is a little hesitant, because if he takes away Yuza's power then Misa will fade away. But she assures him it's fine, and Adasaka takes away their abilities. Adasaka travels the world to steal everyone's abilities, including those who haven't fully shown their power yet. However, as he keeps taking powers, it slowly takes a toll on him as he starts losing his sense of self and his memories. One day, Adasaka wakes up to him covered in grime and soot, vaguely recalling himself attacking a base of syndicates last night. As the days progress, Adasaka starts to lose more and more of his memories, even forgetting who now is. Still, on the days when Adasaka has full control of himself, he continues to loot the abilities of people around the world. News of his mission spreads across continents, and people now dub him as the One-Eyed Grim Reaper. One night as he's looking for the very last ability wielder, he gets shot by a man with an arrow. Weakened from the weight of the powers in his body, Adasaka is brought to his knees. Just then, a young girl comes to his rescue and buys him enough time to get back on his feet. He steals the girl's ability and tells the girl to go home. He faints from over-exhaustion, and luckily, his brother finds him and brings him back to Japan. Once Adasaka wakes up, he's forgotten everything about himself and everyone else. Now greets him, saying she's his girlfriend, but he doesn't remember her at all. Now gets a bit sad but she greets him happily anyway welcoming him back home. We then see Adasaka surrounded by his family and friends, promising each other to fill their lives with only fun things from now on. 
and this brings the anime to an end. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on another video. Until next time, take care.